Well, good morning. Good morning. Good to see each one of you here today. A beautiful day, not quite as humid. Maybe, maybe falls starting to poke its head around here. And uh, I'm thankful for everyone being here today. Uh, had a busy day. I've already spoke next door to the uh, Southside High School football team this morning. It was nice to see a bunch of young folks getting up early and coming and eating good breakfast. That was certainly a blessing. But I'm glad to be here today. And uh, if you would, let's all bow our heads and we'll open with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Most gracious Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for allowing us to have the energy and the wherewithal to get up and come to church to honor you today. And Lord, may uh, all of our thoughts and everything that's done here today be about bringing glory and honor to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'd like for you to join us in our call to worship, which is found in the red hymnal, hymn number 57, 04,000 tongues to sing. We will sing verses 1 and 2 of our call to worship this morning, hymn number 57. in there. All righty, just a, a few announcements. Uh, I want to remind everybody that we, we do have uh, announcements in, in our bulletin. I hope everyone has a bulletin. Do we have any more? We're out of bulletin, so uh, we, we can, uh, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, to have, but in your bulletin, if you had a bulletin, what you would see is that uh, on Sunday mornings we have Bible study at 9.15, and I want to tell you, we had a great time this morning, we're uh, doing a great study on priorities, um, and we want to invite everyone to join us now, and it doesn't matter if you had not been there up till now, you can uh, uh, join right in the middle of it. On Thursday, August 18th, 11 a.m. at Red Lobster. The ladies will meet uh, for their monthly get-together luncheon Thursday, August 18th at 11 a.m. at Red Lobster. Uh, next Sunday night, August 21st at 5 p.m., we will have a church-wide meeting regarding the discernment covenant, charge conference, bathroom renovations, and uh, other items, and that will be held at 5 p.m. next Sunday night. And then uh, next month, Wednesday, September 14th at 5.30 p.m., we will have our charge conference with uh, District Superintendent Jeff Davis, and we will be voting on the discernment covenant there. And everyone is uh, welcome at any of these meetings. However, on the, the meeting on Wednesday, September September 14th, uh, according to the Book of Discipline, uh, not according to our rules, but according to the United Methodist Church Book of Discipline, only uh, members of the church uh, are allowed to vote in that. But we'd love to have you at, at any meeting uh, that's open to the church. Uh, any other announcements we need to add? If you would like to get credit for the cash that you put in the, uh, the plate, please fill out a card, I mean an envelope, put your name on it so that I can give you credit for it at the end of the year. Also, anybody who got their updates or I need to get total, got me. 
um, check your addresses, check your phone numbers, check your dates of birth. And if you will write it on a slip of paper for me, what needs to be changed if you make new labels that can be given out. You know, it's also your responsibility if you change phone numbers, if you move. You need to let us know what your new address is or if you get like a post office box. Um, what was the other thing? Also, Judy is going to be our new texting queen. She's going to be the one that sends out messages through the church. If you have a prayer need or need to make an announcement of some sort, you need to let Judy know. If you do not want to be involved in that, you need to let Judy know. So you won't get a million different texts that you don't desire. Okay, so you've got to let her know not to put you on it if you don't want to be on it. Otherwise, you will be included. Okay, but Judy is the pick up there. She'll be the one handling that. I know a lot of people are annoyed at group texts. Uh, there are some times when I get 30, 40, 50 texts for a day. Uh, but I tell you, I would rather get 40 or 50 texts than miss one important. So th that's kind of how I feel about it. Everybody's welcome to their own opinion, uh, but I appreciate Judy stepping up and, and doing that. Uh, you can still let us know, and then we'll direct it to Judy just to, to, uh, uh, to spread the information out to everybody. Um, I would, I would just ask a favor of you. If you have something you want me to announce, please write it down and give it to me. And then it is your responsibility to remind me to read it. But I'll tell you what, I've just almost given up on trying to remember everything. So uh, that would be a big help to me. Uh, you can always contact Sherry, and she can put it in the bulletin, maybe. But if you just want me to read the church one time thing or whatever, just just write it down and, and let me know. Be glad to do that. Now, I have a thank you note here that I had last Sunday that somebody forgot to remind me to read. <laughs> so it's th this was supposed to be read last week. It says, dear family and friends, Horton Ben. Thank you so much for your kindness during this tremendous, tremendously difficult time. Our family is so grateful for you all for helping support us while Sheila is healing. It means more to us than you know. Love, Tim and Sheila, Bussy and family. And, and I'll just tell you that uh, I got to see Sheila yesterday, spent a good bit of time with her. And i tell you what, uh, it was nothing short of miraculous from, my, from the time I saw her eight days ago. Uh, she was doing much better spirits, doing better. She's still got a long way to go, but uh, she was doing much, much, much better. And, I was just, and, and she just gives God all the glory for it. And we're very thankful. And uh, she wanted me to convey to y'all, thank you so much for your prayers, all that you have done for them. Okay. Any other announcements? If you have anything you want to put in our bins back there for Wave and Cross at the Freedom Center, please bring them by next Sunday because that Monday, a week from tomorrow, Jerry and I will be taking them and delivering them. So if you can get that done by next Sunday, that would be good. Come on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me come down here. All right, if you remember last week, we talked about we're going to start putting together a musical group. Uh, and I brought the bucket and I said, for those who say you can't carry the pew in a bucket, I brought the bucket to the pew to demonstrate that. So it's here. And it's important that it's right here for what I'm about to have. I'm about to send out some surveys and ask you to return these surveys by August 28th, which is two weeks from today. Take some time, pray over it, and uh, put it on here. This one is uh, put your name, your phone number, and email address. And then list your 15 favorite hymns or your kind of favorite congregational songs here. If you have 16, if you have 101, 
and you can add on to it. That's 15 is just a suggestion. And then your favorite anthems or special music that you've heard. So I'm going to ask Jerry to hand these out. And like I said, please return these by August 28th. So that's what, what this is. When you're finished with that, the bucket's up here. Just put it in the bucket. Hey, hey Stan. Yeah. Just remember my. Uh, don't put Christmas songs on this survey. That's right. Yes, don't put them. <laughs> hey, there's a re we're going to answer Christmas songs later. So don't put Christmas songs on this one. So uh, I had to tell Joe that. He said, well, I wanted the Grinch on there. The Grinch. <laughs> so I said, well, we'll do that later. So, all right. So while he's still painting that out as well, you know, like I said, when you're, when you're done, put it in here. There's a second survey. Last Sunday evening, uh, I, somebody was asking about the musical group we put together. For lack of a better term, I started calling it Bucket Brigade. <laughs> so, if you are interested in helping with the Bucket Brigade, uh, please put, I'm just going to hand out this, but you've got your name, phone number, email address, and all that. And, and, and we're trying to find out what kind of music we need to do. Um, you know, people can sing parts or and this is not to exclude anybody, actually it's obvious. We're trying to bring some things to the end who would like to be in it. So, so there's there's a, I can sing melody only. Uh, whatever the person next to me sings. Uh, a harmony part, which part? Can you play an instrument? Put that on there too, kind of thing. And we're probably gonna sing two Sundays a month. So we'll probably practice two Sundays a month. And I'm asking when's your best practice time. So uh, their choices are like Sundays immediately after the worship service, uh, Sunday afternoon or evening maybe about 6 p.m. or uh, Wednesdays or another weeknight about 6 p.m. Rank those one, two, three. You know what you what you can do. But there's also a little picture of a smiling pig under here, and the reason for it is I want you to squeal on a singer. So if you hear somebody in the congregation you think has a great voice, squeal on them and put them down here. It will be confidential with people. Huh? There's one of them right here. Oh, okay. All right. Pat is excluded from that question. <laughs> a dog treat or a people treat? <laughs> it is not a dog treat. It's a people treat. Okay. I just... Okay. <laughs> I'll leave 
have snacks to make it through. <laughs> Let's see. Where am I at? There we go. All right. Uh, all joking aside, uh, Stan went to a lot of uh, effort for, uh, to do this, and uh, I went through all three hymnals that we have, and, and I actually came up with 110 songs. I added a separate page. Uh, I just put on there all the songs I like. And, uh, and that, I, that I feel like I can sing, but uh, I appreciate everybody's participation in that. And, and I want to tell you, you know, we've only got so much room up here, but uh, we, we have ha had uh, 12 or 14 people in the choir before and sung to three people in the congregation. <laughs> and you know, it, it, it was okay to, to do that. Oh, but, one other thing, too, so all of you sitting in the back, these chairs are fine. <laughs> All right. Okay. Is that is that all the announcements? I, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, you know, for me, you know, having a choir and singing groups and everything is a big deal. And uh, uh, I have always felt like uh, that music worship was a a strong point of this church. And, uh, and, and I think it's a way that, that we have always uh, been good at honoring God, worshiping Him. And, and I appreciate everybody, appreciate the singing already this morning. Uh, on our prayer list, uh, I don't have a prayer list. Somehow or another, I got off without mine this morning. But uh, I know for sure we would like to add uh, our niece's dad. Jason Smith. Jason Smith, that's right. Jason Smith, uh, Natalie's uh, dad had a heart attack last night. Rushed to the hospital, in the hospital now, had a stent put in about midnight and uh, asking for prayer. Uh, also, a good friend of theirs uh, uh, lost a brother this week and other folks in, in the hospital for heart surgery. Uh, I know we uh, asked to lift them up. Uh, we're going to continue to remember all the kids returning to school, teachers, all administrators at school, and uh, any others we need to add at this time. And Brian Connolly is his last name. As Kathy Williams so. Brian Connolly had a heart attack uh, hiking the Appalachian Trail. Mm -hmm. Any others? My son-in-law's <clears throat> son dad passed Tuesday, and his mom is facing hip surgery probably within the next two or three weeks knowing her. She's anxious to get it done. Jeff Elliott family. Jeff Elliott, <clears throat> yes. Mary Jean's brother Paul Schrader is... Uh, uh, undergoing another surgery tomorrow at Huntsville. Did I see a hand over here? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> My friend Lisa Sherwinster, she lives in Tennessee, and uh, she's COVID really bad, and has a bunch of dogs like I do, and she is all alone. Okay. Your sister? My friend Lisa. Friend Lisa, I'm sorry. My sister. And I didn't see it until he had recovered, but my nephew has had COVID for the last two weeks, and he's just gone back flying. Okay. So if you, if you ever fly United, and there's a David Newman on there, that's my nephew. Okay. 
Randall Free and his family. His mm -hmm. dad passed away suddenly, and he's just getting over COVID. <coughs> My daughter, I, I, don't, I know y'all probably not, not all y'all know me, but my daughter has for several years battled drug addiction. She's been in jail and she went through her SAP program and she is four years clean and sober. She is, she told me, she came saw, saw me Friday and she says, Mom's, uh, the recovery program at her church in LC has asked her to give her testimonies. Wednesday night. Wow. And so this is the first time she's had to get up in front of anybody. So y'all please pray that the Lord will just pour out everything he needs to pour out. These recovery, it's graduation for their recovery, recovery program so that she can relate what she needs to relate to these girls that are coming out. Amen to that. Absolutely. Talk to me about that after church. Any other? Okay. Well, at this time, I would invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Uh, Sherry's going to play softly, and uh, and we'll close uh, at the end with the with the Lord's prayer. Let's all bow our heads. <laughs> Almighty God, we come before you today, both thankful and humble. Lord, we're thankful for all that you have done for us, all the blessings you shower down upon our lives. We're also humbled in the fact that you would love us in spite of all of our shortcomings. Lord, either way, we are blessed to be your children and so thankful to serve a God that has unlimited love toward all of us. Lord, we lift up all of the new names on our prayer list today. We lift up all the previous names. Lord, we give them all over to you. Lord, we we know that you know what's best. Lord, we ask today that uh, you would forgive each one of us where we have failed you in the days past. Lord, we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have been selfish with our time. But Lord, we come with repentant hearts uh, asking for your forgiveness and we humbly accept that. Lord, we have a strong desire to grow closer to you. One reason why we are all here today, Lord. We love you. We come to worship you. Lord, we ask you to hear all of our unspoken prayers today. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus came and died on a cross for our sins so that we might experience eternal life with you. And Lord, hear your people now as we recite the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd invite you now to join me as uh, we uh, recite number 881 in the Red Methodist Hymnal, the Apostles' Creed, as we affirm our faith. And, and I'll just say this as uh, before we do this, that uh, this is something we do most every week. And, and I hope uh, that we never become complacent uh, just going through the motions and saying the words. I can tell you, for me, personally, when I recite these words, this is something that I hold near and dear to my heart, and, and, and I believe it, uh, or I wouldn't say it. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we'll take up our offering. If everyone would, uh, bow your heads. Almighty God, we thank you for all the good and perfect gifts you have sent our way. Lord, at this time we ask you to bless these tithes and offerings that we might build your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I have never sung the melody on this. I've only sung the bass part. So I'm going to concentrate on the melody and not play. So if you hear something in the melody that, okay, that's not right. That, that's the reason why, because I know the bass part. I don't know the melody. So we'll, go, we'll do it. So.
I just recently started carrying a handkerchief again. And, and I almost had a terrible sneeze in the middle of one of those songs. <laughs> and I tell you, I was real proud of myself that I could reach in my pocket and pull out a handkerchief. <laughs> I know that my buddy Paul Worley would be proud of that. <laughs> he calls it a lost art. My dad always had a handkerchief in his pocket and he always carried a pocket knife. Never know when you got to slice up an apple. I uh, had a good time visiting with the football team this morning. Uh, and I tell you, the, I spoke to them last year. And they were all about asleep. But this year, they were, they were wide awake. And they paid a... a a great deal of attention, and I appreciated that. Uh, not, uh, not that I'm not used to that every Sunday. Uh, I, uh, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm thankful to each one of you, uh, and that uh, I never see anyone back there resting their eyes. Or checking their eyelids for home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I look around, and I don't look around a whole lot because I get distracted, and, but uh, when I do look around, I, I see people paying attention, and, uh, and I appreciate it. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> it, it, it's clean. Uh, today, believe it or not, is the 32nd Sunday of this year. Uh, time flies. Tenth Sunday after Pentecost this year, heading quickly towards Advent and Christmas. Uh, the title of my message is I've Had a Bad Day. Now, I have not had a bad day. Matter of fact, it's been a while since I've had a bad day. Even the bad days I've had recently weren't really bad days, but... I just want to share a few thoughts with you this morning and something that was on my mind. And, you know, as today's conversations we hear a lot, well, how have you been doing? How are you doing today? How's it going? And uh, most of the time we respond, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Uh, one of my responses is, uh, so far, so good. Uh, day ain't over yet. But you know, those are just conversations. And, and unless we're really dealing with somebody who's genuinely concerned, we uh, don't usually go into our struggles and bad things that are going on in our life, the things that are making life difficult. Uh, I've had my share of bad days, and, and I would guess everyone here has also. Am I correct? <clears throat> uh, but Bad days are relative. Uh, depends on our defini definition of bad. I think uh, they're probably different for everyone. I had a preacher one time that uh, described his days that are worse than others. No good, very bad days. And you may have heard me say that from time to time. It's been a while since I've had one, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I'll tell you, when I think about my bad days and feeling sorry for myself, for myself, all I have to do is just look around out into the congregation or think about my friends. And, and I'm uh, reminded of the stories that y'all have told me and makes my no good, very bad days not seem so bad after all. <clears throat> We all have difficult days to live through. Our perspective on our struggles has a great influence on how we deal with our troubles. More often than not, when I think about someone struggling, uh, I immediately go to thinking about Job in the Old Testament. Today I want to read to you from uh, chapter 1 in Job, verses 1 through 12.
Yeah, I wanted to share a, a little bit with you this morning, going back, going back to perspective. When you turn on the news, you open up a newspaper or a magazine or wherever you get your information these days. Most, a lot of people get it off the internet. I mean, it's bad stuff everywhere. Now, there's a lot of good stuff out there too, but a lot of bad stuff out there. Those. Those bad stories tend to sell more advertising, get more eyes on them. But bottom line is, there are a lot of people struggling right now, all over the world. Um, and this is not political in any way. Uh, but I saw a story this week of a place in Afghanistan where the United, United States military left last year. There are, you know, when it gets hot around here, we have cooling stations. When it's freezing in the wintertime, we have warming stations for homeless people or people that are struggling. Well, I'll tell you what they have over there is they have starvation stations because there are so many people that are starving. They don't have enough food. And you know who they're... Uh, biggest customers are is babies. Saw a story of all of these babies that are just on the verge of dying because they don't have enough to enough nutrition to keep them alive. Well, I'll tell you what. When I think about my no good, very bad days, there's nothing to compare to that. Hear now the words of Job. In the land of Uz, there was a man whose name was Job, this man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkey, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. His sons used to hold feasts in their homes on their birth birthdays, and they would invite there are three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, their father Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said, Satan... Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. <clears throat> Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word today. Amen. First thing I want you to remember about Job is that he was human. Just like you and me. Although the Bible says that he was blameless, upright, fearing God and shunning evil, we must remember that Job was not perfect. He was a sinner just like all of us. I believe that Job could be described as a man after God's own heart just like David. Not perfect, but Job did his best to live a righteous life serving God. Then this one day, Satan and God had this conversation and Satan tries to use Job as a pawn to prove to God Job was only faithful because of his success and wealth due to God's favor on Job's life. 
God agreed to allow Satan to turn Job's life upside down and take away all of the things that mattered to him. But Satan was not allowed to touch Job himself. And one day, Job lost everything. We hear from messenger number one that all the servants were killed, a thousand oxen and 500 donkeys carried off by the Sabians. Messenger number two, all, all the servants and 7,000 sheep were burned alive by fire that fell from the sky. Messenger number three, all the servants killed, 3,000 camels carried off by the Chaldeans. Messenger number four, all the servants, Job's seven sons and three daughters killed by a storm that caused the house to collapse down on top of them. Now, sadly, I know that some people here have lost a child. Certainly, we've all lost loved ones that we were close to. But could you imagine losing all ten of your children in one day? Man, that is the worst of days. Of all my bad days. I've never had anything even close to what happened to Job and his family that day. Not really sure how I would have reacted if I were in Job's shoes or his sandals that day and heard that bad news. But it's encouraging to me, and here's how Job responded as we read the last three verses of chapter 1. Verse 20 says, At this, Job got up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. He fell down to the ground to worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Verse 22 says, In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Can you think back to a time when you received bad news? Maybe someone passed away unexpectedly. I remember the evening when I received word that my good friend Rodney Long was missing. We were supposed to meet at home here in Rainbow City that Friday evening. Rodney had been missing for about 30 hours. When I got off the phone, I told my dad, who had just got finished fixing me supper as I drove in from Tuscaloosa. My dad looked at me and he said, son, I'm afraid Rodney's dead. Tragically, my dad was correct. The reality of Rodney's death was confirmed weeks later when they arrested the killers and they told them where they dumped Rodney's body after shooting him. Those sad moments, the idea of worshiping God in my sadness never crossed my mind. Although I should have thanked God for allowing Rodney to make this world a better place for the 18 years that he lived. Fifteen years later when I was told my dad had hours to live, I do remember thanking God for being faithful and allowing me to be present with my dad when he passed. Not sure if that qualifies as worship, but I was eternally grateful for God in that moment. <clears throat> Job reiterates Ecclesiastes 5.15, which says, Everyone comes naked from their mother's womb, and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from the toil that they can carry in their hands. I've heard it said many times that you've never seen a U-Haul following a hearse to the cemetery. We do not take anything with us. We leave it all for others to deal with. Job then states the obvious we oftentimes forget. Job acknowledges the fact that everything we have, everything we own, comes from God. We talk about our big families, our homes, cars, property, anything we can list on a financial 
statement proving our wealth. In all reality, God owns it all. We are just caretakers and stewards of it all. Job recognizes this and honors God for his generosity, saying, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Even with Satan taking away Job's family and most all of his material possessions and wealth, Job praises God and does not sin by blaming God with wrongdoing. I believe I can be blessed to say that I have not ever gotten mad at God or blamed God for anything. It goes back to my dad teaching me that I'm responsible for my actions <clears throat> and my choices. May I also go back to hearing and reading this verse 22 when I was younger. It's a good verse to remember when we think about blaming God for a mistake. A mistake that we think that God made. So chapter 1, Job ends here. But Job's troubles are not over just yet. Satan goes back to God and bargains for another chance at turning Job away from God. And God agrees that Satan can do anything he wants to Job, but he cannot take his life. Satan caused sores and boils to come up all over Job's body from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. The exact nature of the cause of Job's affliction is not clear, but Job had more than festering sores and boils over his whole body. He had terrible nightmares, revolting appearance, and became disfigured, became terribly thin, and had an awful bad breath, constant pain and fever day and night. And all this suffering, Job did not sin in anything he said and continued to praise God and worship him. As I look back over my life, I've had some bad days. Some I would consider worse than bad. But I can tell you that I've never had a day like Job had. Nothing even close. And as I look at myself in the mirror, comparing myself to Job, all I can do unfortunately, is hang my head in disappointment. And I think about all the times that I could have and should have, according to Job, should have praised God and worshipped him for what he had done. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 says this, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Other translations say God sends rain on the just and the unjust. When I get to thinking my life is tough, all I have to do, like I said, is look around. Seems like everybody has, it, has had it rougher than me. And we can all look to Job and his struggles but mainly to his character, staying faithful in his praise and worship of God, even when he was literally going through the valley of the shadow of death. I want us all to remember today, reigns on all of us. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And those dark and dismal times, I hope that we can always look up to heaven and say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I would uh, just like to challenge each one of us today that uh, it's real easy to become discouraged when we go through difficult times. But I want to tell you, we serve an awesome God. <clears throat> Have you ever heard this? God will never put more on you than you can handle. I want to tell you, I think that's a lie. 
Because God, He's put a lot on me that I just can't handle alone. Folks, and it's in those tough times that I have reached out to my friends, my family, people in this room. We are meant to go through life together. We're meant to lean on each other. But ultimately, we've got to lean on God and trust Him. He's the one that's going to get us through. There are going to be times in our life when it's too tough to handle alone. And you need to have God by your side. You have, need to have Jesus in your heart. And I wish somebody would remind me every Sunday to remind y'all that this altar is open anytime. From 9 o'clock in the morning till we leave out here afternoon. Any time during the service, if you want to come down here and pray, if you want to sit on the front row, or, I can't kneel at the altar anymore. My knees just won't let me. But if you need to come and pray, I'll be happy to pray with you. If you want to just pray by yourself and be private, that's fine too. The altar is always open. But let's remember one another. Let's go through this life, help one another, encouraging one another. And I want everyone in this room and everybody that's watching online that will see this later, you're not meant to go through life alone, and you don't have to go through life alone. If you need something, you pick up the phone and you call me or call somebody else in this room because we're going to be here for you. I promise you we will. And most of all, I want you to remember that God is always there. We're going to get through this together with God's help. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Okay, I'm going to invite the musicians to come. And uh, we're going to sing a closing hymn. The altar is open. If anyone would like to come forward, unite with this church, now is the time to do it. sing three more verses. <laughs> well, I tell you what, this is another great day. Uh, uh, 
I want to tell you that uh, Terry has uh, been coming here for a long time. I don't remember how long it's been. It's been a while. And uh, she says that she feels at home and wants to unite with this church. And I want to tell you, we're going to open, welcome you with open arms. But officially, I have to ask you, Terry, Terry Arrington, will you continue to support this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness? Yes. <laughs> I know that you will. The church, I want to ask you, will you support Terry as she unites with this church? Yes. I knew that you would say that. I want to tell you, this is a great day, and uh, uh, welcome. Well, I'll I tell you what. I know that she's uh, uh, great friends with Laura, and uh, I guess her BFFs or whatever you call that. <laughs> but uh, I tell you, it's been a great day. So while, uh, let me just ask, does it, do you have anything you'd like to say? <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> Terry's pretty quiet, as you know, and that's okay. Uh, but uh, does anybody else have a word they want to share? Okay, well, uh, let me just uh, say a prayer here, and then Pat and Sherry will play. When they get uh, done, or whenever you come up and welcome Terry officially into the, into the church family. All right, most gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this glorious day. We want to thank you for Terry's commitment to this church and her love for you. Lord, we ask you to bless her uh, connection with this church family, Lord, that we might... Uh, be faithful in encouraging her uh, that this might be a, a wonderful relationship from now on. Lord, we just love you and we thank you for Terry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All God's people said? Amen. 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 All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, thank you so much. You just, you just surprised me. How about that?